2023 has been a wonky ride for the real estate market and if you're a buyer or a seller who has bought or sold in the year 2023 you would probably agree with me that it has been a roller coaster ride going through the ups and the downs of the real estate market and the events that unfolded for the year 2023 so in this video we'll take a closer look as how the 2023 unfolded from the start to finish we'll take a quick recap of it and based on that, we'll also take a closer look as we head into the new year with a fresh start into the 2024. We'll take a closer look as to what can we expect? Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? How can you know things unfold as we head into this new year for the real estate market? So stay tuned and let's get right into it. Hello and welcome if this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living in Kitchener, Cambridge and Waterloo then subscribe below and tap on that bell for notifications so you can be the first to learn about the current market in and around Kitchener. My name is Dawar McDixit. I'm a local real estate agent serving Cambridge, Kitchener, Waterloo and surrounding areas. I do get calls, texts, emails from people just like yourself who are looking for help in making their move in and around Kitchener and I absolutely love it. So whether you're thinking of moving in nine days or ninth days, be sure to reach out. You can give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, or you can even schedule a Zoom call. All the info right below in the description. I'm more than happy to help you make a smooth move in and around Kitchener, Ontario. So let's dive right into the quick recap of the year 2023 for the real estate market. I mean, the year itself did start on a cold feet and partly due to the fact that the Bank of Canada had just ended the year 2022 with a big rate hike of half 50 basis point. And they followed that into the year of 2023. Just in January 2023, they did another rate hike of 0 0.25, 25 basis points. So those two consecutive rate hikes really did put a pause on a lot of real estate activities. The buyers and sellers both kind of, you know, decided to steer away from this market uncertainty and what to, not knowing what to expect as we head into the spring market. So if I were to look at the first quarter of 2023, it was pretty slow and sluggish for the most real estate market uh, and at that time that did actually pose some great opportunities for many buyers because there were some deals to have and then as we headed into the spring market guess what the spring had sprung for the real estate market spring is usually considered the busiest time of the year for the real estate market uh, in terms of both sales and the activity and 2023 was no exception to that uh, we had seen probably arguably the highest number of activities uh, throughout the year for that spring market partly due to the fact that the bank of canada had decided to keep the rate at the current levels for the month of march and april so this, they decided not to increase it and that did bring in a lot of buyer confidence back into the market and the buyers were back in herds trying to take advantage of that steady rates and trying to make the most out of it and guess what the sellers were alike they were no exception they were trying to take advantage of this buyer rush uh, early rush of buyers and trying to seal the best deals for their home as they are trying to get out of the market and get the most value for their homes and we actually saw that firsthand multiple offers were back uh, we saw one town home, one of the highest offers I saw was 55 offers in the month of April for a town home being sold in Kitchener. Uh, there was a detached home in the range of $1 million in Highland West and there were like 35 offers on that home. So uh, we did see a lot of rush of buyers in that spring market. But as we headed into the early summer, the Bank of Canada did step in with two rate hikes of 25 basis point each in the month of June and July, uh, really with the hope that this will cool things down considerably because, you know, that early rush in the spring market in the housing really got them concerned about the upward price pressures, uptick in the demand and them not being able to get things under control. And really those two rate hikes in the month of June and July did put a considerable break into the market activity i would say summer and the fall was pretty slow and sluggish market in terms of the real estate activity and i guess those two rate hikes did work in the favor for bank of canada and what they had hoped that it would do it did get the job done for them and while the buyers were sidelined during this slowness of the market where sellers were on the same boat uh, you know they decided not to get, go out in the market and sell in this slowness of the market only a handful of sellers did actually come out and list their property only because mainly because they had to 
either they had bought something pre-construction and that's coming up for closing and now they have to sell it things like that or they have to relocate to some other part of the country or province those are the handful of sellers who are out in the market during that you know summer and fall time uh, and that actually kept the demand at the current level because while there were not a lot of buyers guess what there were not a lot of sellers out in the market either so the demand kept at the same level and the price pressures remain more or less at the same level and that slowness pretty much did continue towards the last quarter of 2023 however we did see some slight uptick in the market activity but you know by the time of that late fall pretty much the price gains of that early march april spring market had wiped out from the market i can tell you like you know the people who bought in march april are kind of in the negative equity at this point as we head into the december and the bank of canada just did their last rate announcement for the year just a couple of weeks ago in december 2023 where they had decided to again keep the rates at the current level and that actually did end the year with a lot of optimism for the buyers and sellers alike as we head into the 2024 uh, because now there has been three consecutive rate announcements by the bank of canada where they have kept the rates at the steady level while they have not actually pointed out any plans on starting to cut the rates down but you know there are early signs that you know they are happy to see the numbers that they are seeing they are seeing the job market has slowed down the activity and the demand has slowed down and of course the inflationary numbers are actually inflation numbers are coming closer to that two percent target uh, that they were aiming for so you know it'll be very interesting to see uh, the rate announcement in the month of January and the inflation numbers that will come out before that because that will decide the trajectory of the 2024. Is it going to be another roller coaster ride or is it going to be a year full of optimism uh, with the buy confidence back in the market? Now, let's take a closer look into the 2024. So, there are three rate announcements towards the first half of 2024, and I feel like those are going to be very crucial to help us decide the trajectory of the next year so there is first rate announcement towards the end of january and if the bank of canada decides to keep the rates at the current level i feel like they'll definitely bring in a lot of buyer confidence back in the market and there is next rate announcement in the month of march early march and towards the end of april now if the bank of canada keeps the rate steady in january and you know if you are seeing the inflation numbers coming down to their target i mean they'll definitely give them more reasons to consider start cutting the rates as we head into the spring market now spring market is usually you know the busiest season for the real estate market you know combine that with the bank of canada announcing a rate cut in that spring market announcement of march and april well i feel like an influx of buyers will flood the market and the sellers will be back in the market trying to get the most out of that spring market and we might mark spring as the busiest season for 2024 but there are still a lot of uncertainty surrounding i mean the feds in the recent announcement in december did clearly point out that there will be at least three rate cuts in the, the 2024 we will have to see if the bank of canada will follow the suit or not but more importantly, you know, we are definitely seeing the cooling of the activity. The inflation numbers are looking good. They are heading in the right direction at the very least. And we are seeing the easing of the activity across industries. Job market is pretty soft. So these are all the signs that, you know, the things, all the rate hikes that the Bank of Canada did and intervened to really cool things down. I think it's working for them. And I think as we head into the new year, uh, I'm optimistic personally. I feel like 2024 will be a better year than the 2023. Now on the top of that, there is one more major concern looming on the head of Bank of Canada to deal with is the affordability crisis. Nearly 2.2 million mortgages are actually due for renewal in 2024 and 2025. Now this actually marks nearly half of all the Canadian mortgages and majority of these mortgages are the ones that were actually signed back in the COVID days when the rates were ultra low, uh, you know, and we are looking at 2020 and 2021, those mortgages, many of them are actually due for renewal in the next couple of years. Now imagine like some, some of these rates are as low as like, you know, one and a half or close to 2% coming back and, you know, renewing at around 6%. Where do you think those payments are going to uh, shoot up to? And how do you think those people and those households are going to be able to afford 
that renewal uh, of mortgage and the amount that they will have to pay that obviously result into the significant affordability crisis so again this is one more prompt reason that will require the bank of canada to actually consider start cutting the rates as we head into the you know 2024 and 2025 overall i feel like 2024 is going to be a far better year than what we had seen in 2023 now having said that i feel like the key is gonna be what the bank of canada does with the rates during those first three rate announcements for the next year so basically what they do in jan march and april those three rate announcements are gonna be the key and that will pretty much decide the trajectory for not just the real estate market but for the broader economy as we head into the second half of 2024 i can tell you guys like even though december is usually considered the slowest month for the real estate activity uh, we are actually seeing quite a bit of noise around that six to eight hundred thousand price range because that's where majority of the buyers are and they are able to afford things within that price range with the rates the way they are and also you might be following the bond yields and they have actually started coming down and the banks have already started cutting down uh, on their fixed rates so there is definitely some relief for the buyers there are some good deals still available in the market uh, but having said that, uh, like I said, the majority of the noise is in that six to eight hundred thousand, and we are seeing multiple offers even to this date in the month of December of 2023, uh, which does speak to obviously the sell buyer and the seller confidence alike. Uh, but having said that, times are still very uncertain. There are still a lot of variables at play. But I would say the word of wisdom would be to know your limits, stay within it, not to go overboard in this kind of uncertain times. Uh, at the very least, I would say expect the best, but prepare for the worst. That's how we can go about in a market like this. And always, as you go into the real estate investment, always keep in mind, if you have a time frame of three to five years, I mean, there's no need and you should not actually time the market. That's not the best way to go about it. So if you are able to afford, there are definitely some great deals available in the market, even to this date. So you can make it, take advantage of it. But like I said, uh, you know, never speculate. Uh, and always go with the plan in mind when you go for a real estate investment. I would love to know your thoughts in the comment below in case you guys think otherwise. And let me know nonetheless, what do you guys think? Do you guys think it's going to be a good year? Is it going to be not so good year as we head into the 2024? I would love to know your thoughts and your perspective. At the very least, I hope you did get some value. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel and tap on the bell for notification so you can be the first to learn about the current market in and around Kishner. Once again, whether you're thinking of moving in nine days or nine days, be sure to reach out. All the info right below in the description. I'll be more than happy to help you make a smooth move in and around Kishner. Until next time, well, I do hope to show you around town.